awesome trip. Yeah, it's excellent. Great haul. He's under, folks. He's under. Tenth one, unsuccessful. A little bit too close to this one. And I made it to Malaysia. <laughs> and we are gonna bike about 230 kilometers. For 10 days of silent meditation, I'm gonna get on the bike and go south, back down towards Singapore and Johor Bahru, where my buddy Ryan is, and we have another lead on uh, McGregor 26 uh, that potentially we'll, we'll purchase and sell that over to Borneo. be the boat maybe all right i made it here to uh, johor baru and i'm at cinnabon cove eyeing up this hobie magic 25 which looks in perfectly horrible condition it's a whole coral reef growing below it on it one of the sails is just left out on board so it's just disintegrating it's just deteriorating it's toast uh, it's a very interesting design. They have these solid big steel outriggers, which are racing, leaning out on. And then they have this thing, which is like a full-on lift for the keel, which slides up. I guess it's pretty heavy to balance it a bit. But if you look where the boom is attached, it will hit that weird like crane thing every time you tack. So you have to lift the whole boom up high over it, which seems like something is wrong with the design there. It doesn't really make sense to me. Apart from that, stuff looks in okay condition. They've left a bunch of lines out on deck. I mean, it's definitely been not taken care of, but the stays and stuff all look okay. If I could just get a decent sail, might be the boat for me. Take over to Borneo. So I just woke up, that's why I look like this. For the past six days, I've been doing a liver cleanse. 
that doesn't really mean much. Basically, it just means I've been eating like mostly vegetables, no, no animal products, dairy, no fried foods, just good clean food, which is not a stretch for me to do. I usually do that when I have the opportunity. I've also actually every night been having a spoonful of this stuff, Epsom salts mixed in with water and psyllium husk. Basically just to speed along the digestive process, help clean out the, the liver and the gallbladder and I guess also the colon. Today is the big day. Today I actually start the day by drinking a spoonful of the Epsom salts in 200 milliliters of water. It's quite bitter, a bit sour even. Maybe a little bit of a salty taste, but it tastes like more than something else to it. And now I gotta wait half an hour and then I do the next step which I'll tell you about. So you may wonder why, why, why am I doing a liver cleanse? Bit of a long story. The short story is this. I was in Guatemala about 10 years ago. For some reason decided to do a liver cleanse. Uh, the same one that I'm doing now, except I really messed up coming out of it and I didn't go into it quite as smooth. I don't think I had the best instructions. It's just like a two day thing. And anyways, I got invited to play in a basketball game after I'd done the cleanse. I was feeling really good at high energy. So I was like, okay, I can do this. You know, it's just the locals playing in a little basketball league and they pulled in the tall stringer from Canada. You know, I probably helped us win. It was a pretty good game, but it was pretty like full on intense. And after the game, I was starving, but there was no food anywhere in the town. We didn't buy any food in advance and all the restaurants were closed and there's just no food to be to be had. Uh, I made the mistake of eating some street food, which was like deep fried fries. The last thing you want to do coming out of a cleanse. And so I think I probably did some damage to my liver and my whole digestive system after that. I've wanted to do another liver cleanse since then to like clean up whatever mess I had done. I've done other cleanses, which have probably helped, but not this one specifically. So now I'm doing this one more specifically now, partly because I felt in the past two of the past meditations, I felt serious pain in my chest. I thought, oh, maybe that's where my liver is. So we'll see how it goes. I have squeezed the juice of one whole grapefruit into a jar. And now I'm gonna add some olive oil. Not a tablespoon, but 150 milliliters. I'm gonna shake this up and drink it back all in one go. I don't have to chug the whole thing, but I do need to drink it back. So that's shaken up. It's time to drink this. No, 150 milliliters of olive oil. Probably about the same of freshly squeezed grapefruit juice. There it goes. It actually tastes spicy. Like there's some spice in here. Mmm. It's not that bad. It's a lot of oil. And all this oil is supposed to be good for me. Let's see. Maybe it will be. <sighs> Done. Let the shit show begin. I'm ready for it. I don't think I'll show you my turds, which are gonna come out like little weird pellets of rare gemstones. Right now I feel fine. Apparently I'm supposed to go lie down on my side and hold a pillow to my liver and uh, let the process happen. See how that goes. Hopefully I survive. See you in a bit. So I just spent the last uh, two hours lying down on the bed here with a pillow against my liver. I'm supposed to close my eyes and sleep or just rest, but I actually spoke to rain the whole time, which was, uh, I think, equally restful. It's a nice little room here. I'm feeling okay. A little bit like I've drank 150 milliliters of olive oil and grapefruit juice, but yeah, not bad, a little tired, pretty good. So after chugging the grapefruit juice and olive oil, uh, and then I eventually uh, fell back asleep for a few hours and woke up. I've had some uh, runny poop, but no uh, gemstones, um, which I guess is maybe a good sign. Maybe it means my liver is pretty clean. Nothing too exciting to report, just some runny, watery poo. I just ate a meal, ate some salad. Feel good, feel pretty good. I actually feel really good. 
I like feel super grateful for life right now. I got up and I was a bit dizzy and I was just like got all dizzy and then I looked outside and I was just like, wow, um, the world is so amazing and so wonderful and I'm just happy to be alive. And uh, I just immediately uh, sent a thank you to the folks who I'm staying with who are out at school teaching. And I was just like, just telling them how grateful I am to be able to stay here with them. I was like, thank you, thank you. And they're like, for what? I said, for everything, thank you. Do you like that, Coco? Ah. This is definitely one of my top five favorite fruits these days, the mangosteen. Originally from one of the Malay uh, islands here in Southeast Asia, but it's now cultivated all over the world. Beautiful fruit, very purple, grows in trees from anywhere from 6 to 25 meters high. Yeah, and they're pretty cheap here right now, they're in season. The way you crack them open, you just sort of dig a nail into it, pop it open. And you see that that's the white fruit on the inside. This outer sort of crust is not edible. It's pretty uh, pasty tasting. Uh, these little white bits on the inside are absolutely delicious. Mmm. Sweet, a little bit tangy, not too sweet. Perfect fruit, really. This and durian are the only two fruits that you are not allowed to bring into hotels. Durian because they stink, and this because the pulp uh, permanently stains things. I've actually brought it into guest houses several times because I didn't know that. I don't usually eat them in bed. Sometimes there's seeds in some of the bigger ones, but otherwise there's no seeds and it's just absolutely delicious. Mmm. -hmm. Mangosteen, get it. If you find it in a store, buy it. Purple, 